Hey guys, I noticed there aren't many videos on YouTube showing you how to use the HP Dynamic Signal Analyzers, specifically the 3561A and the 3562A, so I thought I would do a video and show you how to measure total harmonic distortion with them. Uh, and for the heck of it, I've got my 3585A here, uh, which doesn't have the ability to calculate it on its own, but there's some guidance in the manual on how to um, how to step through it and get the numbers so you can calculate it. Or if you happen to be curious, Mark, and own a uh, fancy old HP calculator, they actually include a script at the back of the manual that you can program using HPIB and get it to display it on the screen, which is really cool. Unfortunately, I don't have one. Uh, so if that sounds interesting to you, stick around. I'll first explain the signal that I'm using to um, demonstrate the total harmonic distortion calculation. I've got an HP 8904A um, signal generator here. Um, it has option one on it, and option one gives you four internal generators that you can sum to any of the outputs, and this is a single output unit, so I've got a couple signals summed into this output. Um, I've got channel A, this is internal channel A, configured as a two kilohertz sine wave at 40 millivolts amplitude. And on top of that, I um, summed it with channel B, which is a 2 kilohertz square wave with 1 millivolt amplitude. And um, that's giving us a signal with about 1% THD, and you'll be able to see the odd harmonics from the square wave in that. All right, we'll start with the 3561A. First thing we'll do is press the preset button to reset the instrument to its default settings. Then we're going to press the frequency button and then press define span. I'm going to lower it to 20 kilohertz since we're only interested in the first couple harmonics for the demo. Um, then we're going to press the special marker here on the bottom. Uh, select harmonic. We need to press define fundamental. Just 2 kilohertz. And that's all there is to it. You see your THD on the bottom of the screen there, about minus 38 dB. Um, if you want to see it in percentage instead of decibels, you can change the um, scale by saying vert scale, change it from log to linear, and now your THD shows up in percent. The other thing you can do um, is if you only want to see a couple, har if you only want the calculation to account for a couple harmonics, you can change the number. So right now you see our fundamental and then there's dotted vertical lines for each harmonic. Um, it's calculating out quite a few you can press define number harmonic, say three, and that's only calculating the fundamental plus the second, third, and fourth harmonic in our calculation there. So you can see the THD went up a little bit to uh, minus, just around minus 40. That's all there is to it. All right, let's do the same thing in the 3562A. I'm gonna go ahead and hit preset and select P spec lin res, and we'll give it a moment to catch up with us. I'm going to lower the frequency span to 20 kilohertz like I did previously by pressing frequency, frequency span, 20 khz. All right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, press special marker and then harmonic on. We need to select our fundamental frequency now. It's uh, currently set to 1 kilohertz. So we'll press fundamental frequency, type in 2. And I notice if you go too fast here, it might throw an out of range error, so we'll give it a second here. But anyways, I typed in 2 and then kilohertz. Alright, so our fundamental is set to 2 kilohertz, and we need to turn the calculation on by pressing THD. And there it is up top, minus 38 dB. Um, you can also view this in percentage, just like you could on the 3561A, by pressing this um, chord button here, and then change it to maglin. And there it is in percent, a little over 1%. Go ahead and change that back. Um, on the 3561A, if you only wanted to calculate the THD for a couple of harmonics, you just press a button and type in how many harmonics you wanted to calculate. On the 3562, it's a little different. You actually have to use the markers to do that. So what you'd want to do is turn the X marker on, and then the, the marker's um, designated by a little circle there. And then you want to press hold X left to the left of your fundamental. And then what you do is you move the marker to the right, and you'll see there's two bars there. There's the left marker and then the right one, and um, you can drag it out to however many harmonics you want to calculate to. So for the second and third harmonic, we're at minus 40 dB. If you add the 
fifth and six, it brings it down to minus 38. The other thing you can do with this uh, 3562A, if you want the uh, display to look like the 3561A, where it shows the waveform at the bottom, it's pretty easy. You press the upper lower button here, make the uh, active trace B, um, press view input, input time one, and there it is at the bottom. Now it looks just like the 3561A. I had originally planned to make this video only for the 3561 and 3562 dynamic signal analyzers. And then I'm thinking, hey, I got a 3585A here, which uh, might be useful if you want to measure THD on something that's beyond the 100 kilohertz range of those instruments. Uh, this goes up to 40 megahertz. It's a traditional spectrum analyzer, although it's a cool one because of the fact that it's low frequency and also the fact that it has a one mega ohm input. Normally, you've got to use an external power supply with an active probe um, on a regular spectrum analyzer. And a lot of them only go down to nine kilohertz, which is useful for or useless for audio. Um, unfortunately, this doesn't have the ability to calculate THD on the screen by itself. Um, you would have to go through and and record the uh, peaks uh, on paper and calculate it manually. Um, however, there is something in the back of the manual, uh, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. It's a script that was written for a HP um, 9825 calculator, which is really a early computer. Um, it's written in the HPL, I think it is, language. Um, but it's pretty simple. It's just a bunch of commands to the instrument and then a couple loops to uh, calculate the THD and some error checking. Um, you know, so if you, you put a, say, 18 megahertz signal into this, you're only going to be able to calculate the second harmonic because it only goes up to 40. So it'll, uh, it'll just calculate that and uh, return the result with just the one harmonic. Um, and it gives you a printout on the screen that looks like that at the end. Um, I don't have a 9825, but what I do have is a computer with a GPIB interface. So I went ahead and converted this script into Python. Uh, you can use um, use it with PY Visa and run it. And um, I'll go ahead and run it. I've got that same signal going in here. I'm going to hit enter on the computer. And you'll see it asks us to do one thing, which is to move the marker, which is the bright dot there, to the peak of the fundamental. Now you'll notice, you know, the peak is 2 kilohertz, and we know that. The marker says 2037 hertz. Uh, however, the script will turn the counter function on and get a more accurate reading there when I go ahead and hit enter on the computer. There we go, it says manual 2000 hertz, so it, it counted it to 2000. And there's our result right on the screen there. Pretty cool. Um, the other thing you can do is... Um, well, not the other thing you can do, but I'll show you. I've got the 3325B here. I'm just changing the input over to that, and I'll show an example with an 18 megahertz sine wave where it's only going to show the second harmonic. So I'm going to go ahead and reset the 3585. I'm going to change the input back to the 1 meg input. Give it a second to sweep it. You can see. You can already see it on the screen. There's our 18 megahertz, and there's the. Um, second harmonic of that. I'm going to hit enter and run the script again on the computer. It'll prompt me to move it to the peak again. And there we are. Hit enter. And since it can only calculate it out to the second harmonic, that's all it did. There's some other um, information in the manual. It's a really good manual, like all this old HP stuff is, on um, calculating it manually. There's a bunch of different ways to do it, so if you don't have GPIB and don't want to use this script, you can do it manually. Um, I put a link in the description to my GitHub page where I um, put a copy of the script that I wrote in Python, and you can run that yourself. That's all there is to it for this video. Thanks for watching.